Welcome to Papillion Unscripted. I am Michael Severe, a place to go to hear from people who truly help make Papillion feel like home. We have a really special edition for you this time. Unless you've been under a rock, you haven't heard about Jordy Ball leaving Oklahoma to come to Nebraska. She is joining us along with her dad, a Papillion Fire Captain, Dave Ball. How are you guys doing? Good. Great. I can't, I can't imagine how the last week has been. It's just a whirlwind. Is that how you describe it? Yeah. Yeah, I think yesterday I saw that the World Series was a week ago, and I was like, it felt like a month ago, just everything that's happened since then. Yeah, I, I know when you're a dad, you're obviously always trying to protect your kids and make sure, but it's a decision that obviously she had to make herself. What, what were your and your wife's part in the decision that Jordy made? Uh, just helping her through the decision. Honestly, there's been talks about this move going on for a long time. Um, and a, a lot of anticipation, preparation leading up to this week that's been so busy and chaotic. But, uh, you know, she just uh, she, she had a lot of things to figure out over the course of the last year. And uh, we did our best to help her through. You know, at her age, you can't make decisions for him anymore. You have, yeah. to, you have to offer your, uh, your guidance, your opinions, and, and let them find their way. So we're thrilled she's home. I mean, it's been a, a great week, a happy week uh, coming off of championship experience like that and just knowing that you know in uh, August here she's not going to be heading seven hours away again so we're thrilled. Ultimately when did you make the decision? Um, well this is a decision that I think has been on my heart for a long time. Uh, my freshman year I experienced some homesickness but every freshman does mm -hmm. so um, just stuck it out uh, but then this last year instead of those feelings go going away they just continued to get worse and I just knew that um, like my foundation is my family and my faith and I have never been an ha a happy person when I don't have balance in my life and I don't have those things that are super important close to me um, and so being seven hours away for softball I love softball but not more than those other things in my life and so coming back here I get to be in touch with those things while still playing a game I love and feel the support from my family. And so those have been things that have all been going through my head just this last year. When we talked to you last time, you told me you were closest with Caden, your oldest brother, Hayden. right? Hayden, sorry. And you, you <laughs> I know I was going to mess that up. But you, um, you guys talked all the time. How much of a conversation did you have with him? How much did he help you making this decision and dealing with this? Hayden is just so mature for his age and wise beyond his years and I honestly talk to him and go to him for advice like I do my parents at times. So one thing I know about Hayden is that he will support me no matter what. Um, he came down and watched me once this year and he was like it wouldn't matter where you're playing or what is across your chest like you're my sister out there and just seeing you out there brings me so much joy and that just meant so much to me and just knowing he's always in my corner um but also he tells me what i need to hear at times too um he's someone that i have definitely gone to for advice in this what's the feeling you have when you hear as a father that she was there homesick not necessarily having the joy maybe she should have coming off of a win or whatever else what's what's that feeling like yeah well you just want your children happy healthy um she went down there with high expectations for the game, but the longer she was down there, the more Emily and I could sense the scales tilting in that, yeah, the softball was there at the volume she wanted, but she was lacking other things in her life. The happiness wasn't there. The imbalances were obvious to us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I guess the, the, the longer it went on, the more concerned we got, and it just finally got to the point where, hey, you know, this, this is what she's telling us she wants to do. It's, it's hard. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to walk away from that. It really is. And uh, as parents, we felt like she was walking away from a lot. But at the end of the day, you know, her peace of mind and well-being is by far more important to us. And we're playing softball here. If that balance is back in place, that's all we care about. Yeah, because kind of part of it would be legacy, right? You had the opportunity, the way it started, to maybe be the, one of the greatest softball players of all time at Oklahoma. Um, did that go into your thoughts at all in terms of staying through that just to finish that, that legacy? Um, I don't know if it was more so me deciding if I wanted to stay to finish a legacy. Um, I mean, OU right now is like the pinnacle of softball. Sure. And so just knowing that since I was eight years old, I have dreamed of that and I got to live it for two years and it was awesome. And I love the girls on the team and the coaches pushed me to be the best um, player I could be. Um, the, when I was down there and after winning that first year and even this second year, I just realized that is a really cool accomplishment, yeah. but that's not everything. And that's not ultimately what's gonna matter at the end of the day when I am, back home and I'm raising my kids and it's gonna it's about way more than that and so 
I just learned, like, yes, those are really cool things, but I don't think that would have been my reason for staying. Mm -hmm. So, I always ask student athletes when I talk to them about the amount of travel their parents have had to do, whether it was going through AAU or a club sport or whatever else. I'm sure it's thousands of miles for you guys. Just what's overall that feeling, knowing that it's you know 55 miles away or shorter than that from here, I guess, about 50 miles away. Yeah, you know, we don't mind the travel so much. One of the challenges for me personally, now my wife has the traditional eight to five Monday through Friday job, flexibility with taking time off when she, she wants it and all that. On the fire department, it's a little different. Sure. With shift work, uh, especially being a first responder, there's some flexibility with time off, but at the same time, it's really challenging to get those dates off that you need when you need them. We have the uh, luxury here at Papillion of being able to kind of pick and choose days but at the same time, most of us put our time in very early and those days fill up. Sure. So uh, when the spontaneous, hey, I need next Wednesday off comes up, if we've got a few people off, it's just not available. Mm -hmm. so. My, uh, my brother-in-law played football at Hastings and we were watching the tape of him and you could hear his mom in the stands. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of parent, what kind of stu uh, parent is uh, Dave and your, and your mom in terms of, you know, in the stands? I love that they're supportive of the entire team. Like, there are times throughout games where they probably get more rowdy for something another girl does than they might get rowdy for me the entire game. And I love that because yeah. if you were up in the stands, you wouldn't necessarily know that they're my parents by the way that they cheer for the team. Mm. So I've always thought that was super cool, and I've appreciated that from them. Yeah. How, how have you handled it over the years? Yeah, we cheer for the team. I mean, yeah. that's how it is. Obviously, she's our daughter. We want to see her do well, but... Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, we're there to support them all, and we're happy for the individual accomplishments every one of them make. And after yeah. the game's over, big win. We'll you know we'll celebrate collectively with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been to both College World Series, and the biggest difference is the how angry the fans get at the boys' College World Series when there's a missed pitch, umpire misses something. It never felt like to me when I've been to Oklahoma City. It's, it's kind of a really a different feeling, isn't it? The way you guys you guys just seem like you're um, certainly happier. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, is it's not as angry. It doesn't feel like to me. Do you feel that when you're in Oklahoma City? Gosh, you know, I, to some extent, I do. The, the biggest difference I feel from being down in Oklahoma City compared to uh, Charles Schwab Stadium is yeah. just everything seems closer, sure. more compact. You're you're just it's a huge stadium downtown. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, when you talk to your coaches and your teammates in Oklahoma, how did that go? How did how did, the, did you guys gather together, or how did that work? Yeah, I talked to the coaches um, in person, and they were very understanding. And, you know, we spent every day around each other for the longest time. And so, honestly, they had kind of felt where my heart was at. Mm -hmm. And hearing that from them, they didn't try to persuade me to change my mind. They acknowledged that the fact that I was having this conversation with them after the week of the World Series and how great that was, they're like, we know that this has been on your heart for a while. So they were super supportive. And the same was for my teammates. It's like my roommates were like, yeah, we've lived with you all year. Like, you need to go home. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I was just taken back by how much love I felt just from my teammates, from my coaches, and even from the fan base down there. Like, they were all incredibly supportive and understanding. So when you had a chance to talk to Coach Ravel, what was, what was her response? What was that like? <laughs> it was kind of emotional. Um, it was really, truly a full circle moment, knowing that I was committed there like in eighth grade, right. and then I ended up going to Oklahoma, but it was open arms. And I think that was just such a cool feeling um, because it's been on my heart for the longest time to play at home. And even when I ended up decommitting to go to Oklahoma, it was kind of a hard thing to do because I never wanted to leave home. Mm -hmm. It was just a very um, hard time, and it's a hard opportunity to pass up to have that opportunity. But um, it was just just full circle. Yeah. You know, our, our slogan is feels like home, obviously, in the city of Papillion. And you, you wrote this on Twitter, Dave. You said, um, she grew up playing ball in our parks studying in our schools. She was raised on the earnings of a City Papillion employee with all her brothers. Her mother grew up in this town, and there's not another place on earth we'd want to raise our family, hashtag hometown pride. What, first of all, why did you, you write that? And just what is the feeling of what you've experienced here in Papillion raising your family? It's been incredible. And you, and you work for, one of the things you really notice when you cover the police department and the fire department. You guys are so close, especially the fire department. You guys live together, essentially, for most of the time. Uh, you eat together and all that stuff. It is, it is really a family there along with the whole city, right? Yeah. Man, the city papillion, uh, you can be anybody you want to be here. You really can. That sense of community is, is strong. I'm 
I'm, I'm working my 20th year here uh, as a as a you know member of the fire department. Never once have I felt like I had to compromise my values, my beliefs to maintain employment here. At the same time, we open our arms to everyone. I mean, having that military base has been an eye-opening experience for me because as we moved around a little bit raising our family, we got to meet different people um, who travel all over the country, and I hear time and time again, this is our favorite place. We want to retire here. That speaks volumes. These are people who travel all over the world. Yeah, and you obviously loved here. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to, Warner Park's going to do the Jordy Ball Day coming up on June 30th, which is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. What's that feeling like, just the recognition that, you know, you get from the people here? Even after you left to go to Oklahoma, it still felt like, you know, you're ours. You so, know. Yeah, the support was, the support has always been there. And I think just like my dad wrote out, um, it's like there's just so much pride because my whole life has been here. And it's from day one where just the support of Papillion has been here. And it just, it's a different feeling coming home from school and just driving down the main street when you're going through downtown Papillion and eating at the Dairy Queen, eating at the Runza. Like those are the downtown Papillion staples. Right. Um, I think it's just crazy. I don't think I can totally wrap my mind around the fact that like the Warner Park thing is still happening. It's mm -hmm. just crazy because I still see myself playing the YMCA soccer over there and getting the runs after the game with my grandparents. It's just, um, it's just crazy, but Papillion is a huge part of my life. Let's talk a little about the WC, the CWS. Mm -hmm. um, we talked the first time, and I was bringing up Peaches James and talking about you guys always having to go for perfection. You're pretty close to that. When you, when you look at the numbers, one of the few pitchers to ever do what you did in terms of going scoreless for that many games. Do you feel you're, you're close to what you're striving for in terms of perfection? Um, I've always said, like, you want to practice for perfection, knowing that no one's ever going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but really what motivates me is not the perfect numbers. It's simply just the team wins. And so our team has always said, you know, we're going to work hard. We're going to leave it all out there. And we trust that the end is already written. It's in the Lord's hands. And all we can do is give our best effort. And what happens, happens. That's all you can ask for at the end of the day. So I think just the goal of giving it everything you have all the time, um, that's just something I've always thought about, and that's my goal, is to make sure I'm leaving it all out there. And then whatever happens as a result of that is what happens. You guys' relationship with, with the Lord is very important. You know, I, mm -hmm. The whole team of Oklahoma seems like it yeah. talked about it. It feel good hearing her, what she says about that and what it means to her? Yeah, it did. You know, that was quite a platform for those girls to perform on and for them to get to the point where they were as comfortable talking about that on national level cameras as they yeah. were. It says a lot about, uh, you know, the coaching staff and just the environment that they've created there. Let's talk about the, the 90. First of all, why 98 for your number? 98 mm -hmm. for my number because it was his number when he played football in college. Oh, really? I don't, yeah. yeah. She played defensive end? 98? Right. Okay. All right. All right. It's 100% her number now. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, is, uh, she's gone a little bit farther than you have in your career? You ran with it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why you picked that. And then you guys have the, the matching tattoos. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, my dad came to, well, when I was growing up, we played travel softball and it was all over the place all summer. Right. And he took me on a lot of those trips. And so, um, the very last summer before I went off to college, we were at our national tournament, so it was the last hurrah, kind of, and we were in California, and it was my birthday, and we wanted to do something special, and so I was like, hmm, what about tattoos, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> so we looked up some tattoo shops nearby, walked in, and got them. It wow. was, yep. It was fun. Really and did, fun. should she have to convince you, or what was the process like? I can't say it was on my radar <laughs> before her mentioning it, but uh, she didn't have to sell it too hard. I mean, it's something special that will last. Yeah, and we know how much you love Nebraska. Obviously, you have the, the state there. Tell us yeah. about that one. Um, I got this my freshman year at OU. Um, like I said, I was just homesick. Um, and this place, I think, going away, I'm glad I went away for a point because yeah. it just helped me to acknowledge my love for it and knowing that it just means more when you step away for a second. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, actually, it's a funny story. Um, so we were during spring break, and we were doing two days. So we had practice in the morning and practice in the afternoon, and I went in that little gap, <laughs> showed yeah. up to afternoon <laughs> practice with a new tattoo. But and you had yeah. it covered up, obviously, right? No, you can, I didn't. You just put a little bit of a little bit of Vaseline Le on it yep. and going. <laughs> yeah. The whole time she was down there, it was very important to her to maintain this identity of a Nebraska girl. Mm -hmm. And I will wow. tell you that she was struggling even then, and I feel like that was part of her coping. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us what's next. Um, when do you have to? When's training start? Yeah. When before the season? When's that kind of stuff start? 
Well, a lot of the girls come back and start training like five weeks before the first day of practice, just in the weight room and working in the Gordon and things like that. And so I'm in the process of enrolling for a summer class so I can get down there and start working with them as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. You referenced um, wanting to kind of make sure people acknowledge the Midwest and Nebraska, state of yeah. Nebraska for their female athletes, softball players. How do, how do you want to do that? What's your, what's your mission for that? Um, well, just growing up, it was always um, playing for a Nebraska team, and we'd go out to these big tournaments and always wanted to see us lined up against the teams from the big softball states like California, Texas, and just give them a run for their money. And I think in doing that, our whole team kind of just developed like a little chip on our shoulder. Like we wanted to put Nebraska on the map because there is a lot of talent in the Midwest. Okay. And I think part of that is just because the inbreded like blue collar work ethic that you have to have here. And um, there's just a little sense of pride in that. And so um, just, I want to just, uh, take that and give it back to a program here where I was raised that I grew up watching and so I think that would be a really cool thing. That would be and I, I, I imagine with the way the transfer portal works there might be some people that want to come here to play with you. I'm just <laughs> guessing that that's a possibility. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. Last thing I'd asked you about NIL before when you were on it. You said you wanted to earn it. You know that was important to you to, mm -hmm. to play earn it before you start getting it. You, you think about that now in terms of coming back to Nebraska, who you are, your name, and, and the NIL part of it? Um, NIL is a really cool thing for college athletes, especially females, because it's not like female athletes can go on and play pro and get a whole lot of money when sure. you're done playing in college, but it's not my driving factor. And especially coming home, it's not my driving factor. I'm coming home for so many reasons. That means so much more to me. And um, NIL, it will, it's just, if it's there, it's cool. Yeah. And I hope that um, female athletes all across the country can expand on those opportunities when they happen. Um, but I just never want it to become the driving factor. Awesome. We appreciate it. Thank you for doing Thank this. You. It was good to meet you. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you guys coming on. Thanks. Join us again next time we hear from someone who truly helped make Papillion feel like home.